What's up guys, it's Ed from TechSource and this is Big White. It is Big Red's bigger brother and it's rocking the 7900X and two MSI GTX 1080 Ti's in SLI. And yes, this is definitely overkill. After all, this is a tech source build. It also has 64 gigs of RAM because why not? And the new MSI X299X power gaming motherboard. Obviously, I was going for something that was aesthetically pleasing and I haven't really done a black and white build with gray accents. So this is officially the first one on the channel. The case I picked up is the Corsair 570X Crystal Edition, which is exclusive and only available on Newegg. Basically, it's a full ATX tower with tempered glass panels all around, and it looks stunning. One of the things I love about the case is the fact that it comes with a raceway near the back, which helped me a lot when it came to cable management. I'm not really a fan when cases come with a back tempered glass panel because for one, you barely even see it in the first place, and two, even if you do see it, you get to see the ugly cables behind there as well as the storage devices. Especially if your SSD or hard drive comes with those nasty stickers on there. It really does mess with your build. But with the 570X Crystal Edition, it's not that bad because the cable management raceway really made a huge difference in hiding most of the cables. I also like the fact that it came with three RGB fans and you can actually change the colors on the fly using the control panel on the top of the case. That's pretty cool. So the things I don't like about the case. First off, the PSU shroud. It doesn't extend all the way to the front, which kind of leaves this empty space near the bottom. I don't like that because now the bulk of the cables are visible and it doesn't have any space to hide them. I don't expect it to go all the way to the front, otherwise it would block the bottom intake fan, but just enough to cover the cables under here would have been really nice. Another thing that it doesn't have is a cutout on the PSU shroud, so that way I can route the GPU wire straight down for a much cleaner look, but instead, I was forced to run them through the side and out the back, which honestly, it doesn't look that good to me. It looks a little messy, but other than those minor gripes, the case is really cool and I had a lot of fun building inside it. The MSI motherboard is the piece that brought this entire build together. It was the perfect choice for the color scheme as well, with an all black PCB and gray accents. It kind of has a spaceship design, which really looks cool in my opinion. The X-Power Gaming AC is also packing tons of features. It's currently the best X299 motherboard that MSI has to offer with a total of 14 power phases to help with stable overclocking. And it comes equipped with three M.2 slots, four-way SLI support and Mystic Light, which lets you customize the lights on the IO cover and that spaceship looking heatsink. Overclocking was also very easy on the motherboard. I was able to push the 7900X all the way to 4.8 gigahertz on a 1.45 core voltage. Out of all the motherboards I've tested, this one is actually one of the most smoothest experiences I've ever had when it came to overclocking. The board even comes with a cool M.2 shield that kind of snaps in place near the top. And under here, I threw in a 480GB M.2 SSD from Corsair. The other storage device is a 960GB Corsair Force LS SSD that I hooked up in the back and a 4TB hard drive from Seagate for mass storage. Some mods I included were custom MSI backplates, the SLI bridge, and even some fan grills to cover up the ugly back of the Corsair RGB fans. They are all from V1 Tech and as always they do amazing work, so make sure you guys check them out and I'll drop a link to it down below. The cables I picked up are from Cable Mod, which is my go-to right now for custom sleeving since I can completely customize the length, color, and even the type of material I want for my cables. It's just way more convenient than other websites, which is why I love using them for all my builds. I also decided to mod the RAM sticks without painting them. So basically what I did was I removed the stock heat spreader and I installed the cable mod memory kit instead. I went with white so that it matches with the back plates and the fan grills. I personally think it looks way better than stock. They do have other colors to choose from, which is awesome. You can definitely find the right one to match your build's color scheme. However, it's only available for the Corsair Dominator Platinums. They also released a new product, which is their new AIO sleeving kit, which you guys can clearly see on my H100i V2. 
It was a bit difficult to install at first, but after I got used to the method, it became a lot easier. It comes in several different colors and it definitely makes the PC stand out compared to the default boring black tubing from AIO coolers. Currently it's available for the NZXT Kraken series and the Corsair Gen 2 series, but be sure to check out their website for more info. Once again, I'll drop a link to all this down below. Performance wise, this is a fiery beast. And I say fiery because we got some pretty high temps. We all know that the 7900X gets extremely hot, especially when overclocking. Even with the H100i V2, I'm hitting temps of around 100 degrees on max load. Even though the PC is stable, I wouldn't recommend overclocking this chip unless you are water cooling it or have a beefier cooler. The GPUs on the other hand are hitting temps of around 80 degrees on max load, which isn't too bad. So this is the sound test for Big White. Uh, it's running on full load, SLI is enabled, and I put back the tempered glass side panel. But you know what guys, two 1080 Ti's are definitely overkill, as a lot of games out there are not fully optimized for SLI. In fact, I was getting lower frames with SLI enabled than with a single GPU. A good example was Doom and OpenGL. The game was lagging so bad, hitting around 10 FPS and 4K resolution, but once I disabled SLI, I jumped back up to the low hundreds. The same goes with Battlefield 1. I was getting around 35 FPS, running two 1080s in SLI, but once I disabled it, I went back up to 75 FPS. Obviously, Battlegrounds is a newer game, so I didn't expect SLI support, so you would be getting around 45 FPS with dual 1080 Ti's, but if you guys drop it down to one GPU, you will increase your frames past the 60 mark. So there's definitely a huge difference there. Ghost Recon Wildlands and SLI was also horribly optimized, giving around 32 FPS. And once SLI was disabled, we nearly doubled in FPS to 62. This was in high settings though. Games that were optimized for SLI support include GTA 5, which hit over 60 FPS in maxed out settings. Uh, we got Hitman Absolution and Ultra settings, which gave us around 110 FPS. And finally, we got Metro Last Light maxed out, which gave us around 71 FPS. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is don't pick up two 1080 Ti's. It's overkill and it's not going to be worth your money. If you guys really want to game in 4K, a single 1080 Ti will get the job done. Or if you guys have the money and don't care, pick up a Titan XP. This build wouldn't be possible if it weren't for Corsair, MSI, V1 Tech, and Cable Mod. So thank you guys so much for sending these parts out. I'll drop a link to everything I mentioned down below as always. If you guys enjoy my monthly PC builds and are feeling awesome, feel free to drop a like to show your support. And also dislike if you guys do not like my builds. That is cool too. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I'll see you in the next one.